Joining us now is Martha McCallum, who specializes in the president's first 100 in days. In the chaos. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, that, that is the impression. Yeah. But outsiders look at this and say, it's chaotic. Would, would you say that's You know, I love what you just touched on at the end there, because, you know, there are those out there who say, this is exactly what we voted for. It takes chaos, it takes reform, it takes an ugly sort of situation to get to the underlying reform that is really at the basis of that. But what they're in trouble with now is that the picture is one that is messy in terms of human relationships at the White House. That's not a helpful story for them. They need to project a feeling that there is a grown-up in charge, that everything is going exactly as planned, and the chaos needs to happen where reform is centered. The kinds of things that you're talking about, discussions with Benjamin Netanyahu, the issues of substance, I think people are comfortable with if those things feel a little bit shaken up. But this you know, top layer and the, the Michael Flynn issue and all of the infighting and the leaks and everything, that's not coming across well. The concern is that this chaotic situation, this backbiting within the White House, the administration, mm -hmm. will bleed over into the legislative schedule. Tax cuts, Obama reform, mm -hmm. deregulation, get rid of Dodd-Frank. I mean, if the chaos there drifts over into this part of the administration, we've all got a real problem. Will it drift over? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, think about the kudos that he got for the people that he appointed for most of these positions, right? Everybody said, look, this is the most impressive cabinet that we've seen in a long time. He's lost one of those individuals right now. Um, the people like Mattis, people like Kelly um, are giving people a, a good sense of confidence. Those people need to be put forward. They're part of this equation needs to be what people are talking about and seeing. Um, and, and that's going to take some reorganization in the White House, and we expect that perhaps we'll see something along those lines. Talk about live action news. A few moments ago, General Mattis, Defense Secretary, mm. speaking in Brussels, mm -hmm. he's telling the Europeans, yeah. you know, arm up. <laughs> Get a backbone. <laughs> Start spending some money on your own defense. That is major news. It's, it's huge. And he expects <laughs> the is. commitment to be similar in yeah. proportion to what the United States is doing. This is not, I don't think, a revolutionary idea to expect mm -hmm. people to be, to hold to the commitments that they made to NATO. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. And, you know, you think about the president on the campaign trail saying, you know, that, that NATO, you know, perhaps needed to be seen in a slightly different light, that we needed to shake it up. There was, there was so much hysteria in reaction to that. Now we're seeing the nuts and bolts of what he's talking about. And when you do have that commitment, when people are, you know, have skin in the game, there's a different feeling amongst them. And, and now we're waiting for the arrival of Benjamin Netanyahu at the White House. That could be a little contentious because President Trump has said it's not helpful when the Israelis add to their settlements on the West Bank. This might not just be a kumbaya session here. I think the thing that, that President Trump wanted to make very clear during the campaign was that the United States and Israel are staunch, dedicated allies. And he felt, I think justifiably so, that that relationship had been <coughs> damaged dramatically over the course yes. of the Obama years. So I think he reset that part of it. I think Benjamin Netanyahu walks in highly respected to this meeting at the White House with a good you know, red welcome mat put out for him. But he also threw out that marker that you just mentioned where he said, you know, we, we don't want to see new additions to the settlement. So, you know, he always likes to sort of put down the parameters of negotiation and make it clear that he's not going to be a pushover, but at the same time, he is respectful and welcoming. So, you know, we'll see. I, I think they're going to hope that by the time we do our show tonight, this is the focus of the conversation and not some other thing uh, that gets thrown in in between. You never know. that's the big problem. You do right not now. know. Live right action now. news, live action presence. So I'm glad we got to talk about it now. Yes, we did. <laughs> in a calm. Exactly. <laughs> Martha McCallum, Thank everyone. You, Good stuff. Good Thank to you. see you. All right.